On December 1st, 1939, Juanita Trevino gave birth to her only son, Lee Buck. Raised by his mother and grandfather, Lee began working in the cotton fields at the age of five to help bring in more income. Trevino was introduced to the game of golf at the age of six by his uncle and would sneak onto nearby Dallas Athletic Club to practice. That's one of the reasons that I play so fast is because I used to go and slip on and had one club and, and after I'd find some balls in the water or whatever, I'd run out there and I'd play a couple of holes and when I'd see a group coming or the green superintendent or somebody, I'd run off the golf course and hide. By the age of 14, Trevino left school to work full time as a caddy and would hit at least 300 balls after work every day. In 1956, at the age of 17, Lee Trevino joined the Marine Corps and spent four years as a machine gunner. During that time, he could be found playing golf with Marine Corps officers, as well as competing in armed forces golf events in Asia, until he was discharged in 1960. Started playing for the Marine Corps uh, my last two years of a four-year hitch in the Marine Corps, and became a pretty good golfer. During the second round of the 1975 Western Open, Lee Trevino was struck by lightning while waiting out a weather delay and suffered injuries to his spine. Trevino underwent surgery to remove a damaged spinal disc, but would continue to have back issues throughout his career. In 1983, Lee Trevino joined NBC as a color analyst for the network's golf coverage. We're gonna be here all year, so we hope they'll be watching. Trevino would spend six years next to sportscasting legend Vin Scully, calling shots. Uh, he knows it. He knows it. Analyzing swings. And that's one of the reasons, John, that he hits it so far. And giving golf tips. That goes the ball right down the middle of the fairway. See your PGA pro about it. He knows exactly what I'm talking about. His swing was often ridiculed, but no one could attack the pins like Lee Trevino. With an out-to-in style designed to fade the ball, Trevino taught himself how to swing and never sought help, stating, quote, I've never met a teacher that I couldn't beat on the golf course. After placing fifth in the 1967 U.S. Open, Lee Trevino earned privileges on the PGA Tour. One year later, he would collect his first victory at Oak Hill Country Club, and from that moment, Trevino became one of the dominant figures on the PGA Tour, grabbing a total of 29 victories. During his tenure, Trevino was part of six victorious Ryder Cup teams with a record of 17, 17, and six. In 1990, Lee Trevino joined the Champions Tour and would become a key character in the early success of the tour. In his first year, he won an astounding seven tournaments and would lead the tour money list 1990 and 92. By the end of his career, Trevino tallied a total of 29 victories on the Champions Tour, second only to Hale Irwin. Throughout his career on the PGA Tour, Lee Trevino was able to capture a total of six major championships, two U.S. Opens, two Open Championships, and two PGA Championships. But Lee's favorite major victory? the 1971 U.S. Open. The thing that gave me the most confidence of all was when I won the tournament in 1971, the U.S. Open, and I beat Nicholas in the playoff. That was the first time that I ever thought that I really belonged. The Masters was the only major that Trevino never won, a tournament which he boycotted in 1970, 71, and 74. He would later admit that the boycott was the greatest mistake he'd ever make on the PGA Tour. In order to capture golf's triple crown, a player must win the United States Open, the Open Championship, and the Canadian Open. Well, during the summer of 1971, Lee Trevino would become the first player to accomplish such a feat. Tiger Woods would be the only player to match Trevino three decades later. Throughout his career, Lee Trevino is known as one of the most approachable players on the PGA Tour. If I cared for you, you'd have done one the Grand Slam a long time ago. <laughs> the Mary Max was never one to shy away from the spotlight and always made a point of entertaining the fans, making him one of the most marketable players on tour. 